This is a video demonstration of our video management software and I'm going to be showing you some of the features this new software offers. This is a completely new interface, very easy to use. As you see, I just uh, double click the icon and it will ask me for the username and password, which is admin. I can just remember the password option here. I can just check it and it will never ask me for that password again. This is the basic interface of the software. Now it's been broken down in three sections. You have the basic section where you can live preview and playback, etc. You have advanced sections. These two options right here are not going to be available or you're not going to be able to basically configure them because you'll need a special hardware for it. If you hover over the mouse on top of the, the icon, it will tell you exactly what it's for. But unfortunately, these two options, you will need a special hardware for you to control it and configure them. Under settings here, you can configure uh, your devices, you can set up tasks, you can configure here the video wall, and uh, you can add users, etc. And let's go back to the general settings. And then here is this is basically the general settings of the software itself. It keeps a log of uh, some events, and you can configure that as well. You can change the instant playback if you wanted to. You can instant playback up to a minute. If your network capabilities are different, you can also set them up from here. You can uh, configure resume live view state. It's basically the software will remember the last layout view that you have for your cameras. And when you open it up, it will open up that way. You also have auto login smart PSS or auto login when Windows starts. And lastly, you can change the time format and sync the time on the software itself. Uh, just remember to save it. Also, the file path where everything will go, you know, if you take a snapshot or you record some of the cameras to your computer or the configuration path, etc. The alarm prompts here, you can configure the software to alert you when uh, motion detection happened on a particular camera and it will make a noise. Click on it and it will basically make a noise or somehow will uh, alert you when something happened. Lastly, here you will see the version of the software. We're currently running the 1.11.1. And that is the latest, and it's available on our website right now for download. So you notice here, you see this button, Add. You can now add tabs, if you like to call them like that. You just click on them, and it's easy to navigate through them. Instead of going back and then closing a window, you can just, right there on the fly, go in and uh, access the uh, options that you just selected there. Let's start with the live preview. This is basically where it's going to show all your cameras, you have a view up to a 64 view. You can also add another live view. You can have two different views. This you can drag them. If you have do, uh, double monitors, you can basically drag this to a different monitor. You will have two sets of views there and you can maximize it here as well. Uh, if you go to here in this section, you can see the size of the windows you can change that to the original size all the way through 64 9 uh, ratio or 964 ratio. You can see that it actually changes. I always like to do full window so I have the whole picture of it. Here on the right side you will see your devices and you can see that they are in a group. You can make different groups if you wanted to and just double click on it and it opens up all of the cameras. Very easy. I can just close all videos from here. I'm sure, I want to do that. Okay. Or you can add one camera at a time by just dragging. Let me change this layout view to four window. So that is mainstream right now. You can tell, oh, I'm sorry, this is substream. I just right click on it and I can change that to mainstream. And now it's using the higher resolution, which is typically 1080p. Or if I do substream, it will be use the uh, lower resolution like D1. From here, I can just double click on it. I have every time that I hover over my mask here on the top, and you will see other options right here. This is the instant playback. It will play back up to five minutes. You will have audio talk if you have a microphone and speaker set up in place. Or if you have a microphone itself, you can hear audio from there. You can take snapshots. You can basically put a snapshot reason and put a type of like a memo, just a reminder of what, what was this for. 
and later on you can search like that. Lastly, you can record this channel to your computer and you can see here, every time you click on it, it will start recording. To stop it, you can just click again. That's pretty much uh, this, this part of the window or this, this section right here, the software. Let me double click in here. I can just keep adding cameras. I can just uh, change the string type or if I want it, I can just close this and add that particular camera using substring type instead. Very simple. You can right click on any desired channel and you will have all these options here as well. This is an NVR, so it's an IP camera, so I can just click channel configuration and automatically I can set the encoding for that particular channel only. I can set up the, the snapshots, overlay, etc. If uh, I am using a PDZ, I have all of the uh, menus here that I can uh, use as well. I can zoom in and zoom out, etc. This software you can use pretty much to manage uh, a bunch of uh, DVRs and even cameras, IP cameras, and then have them all in the same place and have them all on the, the same uh, interface and being able to manage them. Very simple. All right. Let me go to the home page. I can use the playback. Playback is very simple. You have on the right side again, you have the channels that you want to playback footage. Let's say, for example, and here you have a different categories and the stream that you want to uh, play back actually on the resolution type. Here you will have a calendar you can choose. If you notice there, you can put the time. For example, if I want 12 p.m. And then I can choose here, let's say 15. That's fine. And I can just hit search. Basically, it says search in here, and this is all. This, like you see here, it says that channel 6 failed. That means that there is no footage for that particular camera. Uh, at that time frame. So it's normal. If you have a camera, there's not a lot of traffic or not a lot of people going through. It's not going to record anything. So you have uh, different type of uh, views here. You can view by record or you can view by uh, event. Okay, this is a motion event. You can see here and the length of it. Or you can just simply click the area you're interested. And if you want all of them to sync to that particular time you started, you can just do that as well. Very simple. You can move out through the timeline, basically. And this is grayed out because I choose this time frame. That's why this, this part is grayed out. But if you wanted to play there, you can just simply click on it, and it will say that. So uh, you have to make sure that you have, if you wanted to play not in a particular time frame, make sure that you're using 24 hour period here and then you will be able to uh, play playback files without a problem. Obviously if there is not record on that channel it will not display but after it reaches that point where there is uh, video there it will show up. You can do full screen if you want it. Hit escape to go back or you can change the layouts here as well. Let me close this. All right, let's try only one search. That particular time is fine. Only one channel, and I'm going to show you how to download files. So let's say you want a time frame, but you want to uh, download. You can basically click here, and then it puts a beginning time, and then you can move that. All right, and then you click again, and it's basically a beginning and an end time. Here is where it's going to be downloaded. And you browse. This is the path. You can change it if you want it. You want to do desktop, you can choose that. And you can download and export the file using AVI, which will convert it from the original format, which is the AV to AVI. 
if you choose the original format, you have the option to export the smart player, uh, which basically allows you to play the file in DAV format. Once you hit OK, you will see uh, it will tell you this because it's playing back and you click OK. And right now it's exported. I'm going to cancel this. So this is being played back. Very simple, very easy to use. Another feature that I uh, personally like it is eMap. This is a map of our building, so I can see different cameras that I have set up in place already. If I want to add cameras, here on the right side, we'll see the cameras. And if I want to add cameras to it, just hit Edit. And you can drag the channel that you want. And then hit View. And that basically will be the channel that will display when you click on it. Now, this is basically in a location where this camera is mounted. So for this case, I'm going to delete that. All right, I'm just going to click View. And then I already have set some of the cameras. So I just double click on them. And it shows up different windows of that particular camera. Very simple. All right, this is a quick way to access the cameras that you wanted to see right away using the eMap. Here on devices is where you add devices. If you have uh, DVRs or cameras or, D or NVRs on the network, they will display here like so. You just simply click and add. If you know the username and password, you can type it in there as well. Or you can add it manually if you wanted to by just inputting the name, whatever name you want. Like register mode should be IP and domain. And you can put the, either the internal, the external IP, or the domain name that you created for your connection. The TCP port, what kind of unit it is, what group if you want to cre create a group, a username and password of the unit, and then just click Add. If you wanted to add multiple ones at once, you keep adding the names and hit Save and Continue. And once you're done, you just click cancel and all of your devices are going to be here. Uh, this is the device that I'm managing right now. From here, you can log out or edit the connection. You can get the info, etc. Very, It's very simple. Things have not changed uh, a lot, but the same, uh, the way that you add the devices on the, on the network and on the software itself. Lastly here, I'm going to show you a way to access the network settings of your unit. You have, you know, this is basically the NVR network configurations and, and settings. And from here, I can just change it if I want to. It's very simple. You can add cameras from here as well. It shows a list of the uh, cameras that there are on right now on that DVR. You can see some information about the hard drives, uh, if I wanted to basically format one, etc. The accounts on that unit, maintenance. I can click here and it will open up basically Ethernet Explorer with what service it's and uh, we'll be able to access the unit as well. Just like that. All right. I'm just gonna show you here. You can configure alarm configurations, like I was saying to you, that you can configure a certain alarms that trigger the software to give you an alert, like a, a noise or it can beep when uh, motion happen, etc. You have uh, auto tasks. You can create a task that you want it to start every time you turn on your computer. You can name it and you can basically choose the layouts that you want or you can draw them yourself. That's something that uh, new, that's something new in this version of, of our video management software. And once you want it to start it, just basically go to live preview and just hit here and it will start up that uh, layout that you just configured. PC NVR, this uh, software has the ability to be uh, set as an NVR up to 16 cameras only. Uh, you have to have a bunch of hard drives in it and you have to uh, install the module and configure it as well. 
Lastly, we're going to go to the accounts. This is basically the username and password that you uh, will use when you uh, turn on the software, basically when you log into the software. It's not the same username and password that you use on your DVR locally. It happens to be admin admin, but if you change it on your DVR, it's not going to change on the software, so you will need to change that in, um, in order for it to work, otherwise it will lock up the account. So this is, lastly here, you can see the logs, some of the logs of the software itself. If you want more detail, you can see all the type of logs in here. This is pretty much the uh, an introduction of the uh, video management software, and I hope you like it, and uh, thank you for watching.